grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so we sing the hymn, Living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us, you souls from all their sin, pouring your love and goodness in. Jesus, our love for you we sing, living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, now and every day, teach us how to Son of God, you have commanded us to do this in remembrance, Lord, of you. Into our lives your power breaks through, living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. 
for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We're going to sing canticle number two, the Venite. Let us sing to the God of salvation, to the Lord let us praises bring. Let us come to his house with thanksgiving, let us come before the Lord and sing. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before him, God is Lord of everything. In his hand are the earth's deep places, and the strength of the mountains tall. All the sea is the Lord's, for he made it, by his loving hands he formed us all. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before him, God is Lord of everything. Sing glory to God the Father, sing glory to God the Son, sing glory to God the Holy Spirit who was and is and is to come. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before Him, God is Lord of everything. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no, do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villagers teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick, and cured them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That story from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, is an interesting contrast from all that's gone before. If we recall, on recent Sundays in these readings from St Mark's Gospel, Jesus has literally been mobbed by the crowds. He's achieved celebrity status. Wherever he goes, the crowds seem to follow him. So much so that he even got into a boat and crossed to the other side in order to get away and have some peace. So there's a remarkable openness amongst the people of Galilee to hear what Jesus had to say, to receive his teaching, to receive his healings, and above all, to believe. And then Jesus returns to his own town of Nazareth for the first time since he's begun his public ministry. And then, by contrast to that openness to hear and to believe that we've seen so widely expressed, here we find hearts and minds closed to him. Who does he think he is? We've known him since he was so high. And so, Jesus, we're told, could do no work there. He could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. Which seems to suggest that for Jesus to be able to minister in power, it needed, required an openness to receive and to believe. And so in view of that experience there in his hometown of Nazareth in the synagogue, Jesus decides to step back for a while and send his disciples out. So he went about amongst the villagers teaching and then he sent his disciples out. Which was a significant moment for those disciples have now been transformed from being disciples, which means followers, into apostles, which means people who are being sent out with a message. The disciples become apostles for the first time. And he sends them out in twos to proclaim the good news to the villages of Galilee. But the significant detail, it seems to me, as well as all that thing about not travelling lightly, not taking any extra clothes, not taking any bread or money, the significant detail is that he tells them to go and stay where they are welcomed. If you're welcomed into a house, stay there until you leave that place. By contrast, in the places where he's not well, where they're not welcomed, Jesus tells them to shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. Now, I don't imagine this is a condemnation, an act of condemnation. Jesus wiping his hands of those people, that we should never go near them ever again. That's very much not in the spirit of Jesus, is it? But that act of shaking off the dust is perhaps a recognition that those people are not open to hear and believe. And therefore it's important that the disciples move on. Time is limited. Move on to where there is an openness to hear and receive. You are to stay where you are welcomed, says Jesus. Maybe there's a message for us as a church, as Christian disciples today, and as Christian ministers today. Don't get over-worried where there is rejection or indifference, where, or where people's hearts and minds are closed to God. Remember our Lord Jesus in Nazareth. 
He could do nothing significant there because people's minds and hearts were closed. So what did he do? He moved on. And where there is openness and a willingness to listen and to believe, those are the people to whom we're especially expected to minister to. sent out his disciples into the villages and gave them authority. Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed the gospel. stand and declare our shared faith in the words of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for you have called us into life, and you call each of us to reveal your presence and your love. Make us worthy of our calling, and help us to do what you would have us do. To you be glory and blessing for ever and ever. Lord God, we pray for your church, for Christian people everywhere. Lord God, may we hear your voice and obey your commands, that we may bear faithful witness to you by word and deed. We pray that all within your church may be enabled to fulfil their vocation. We pray for all who are seeking to serve you through their baptism, confirmation or ordination. We ask your blessing upon all who are newly ordained at this time in the diocese of the Church of England, especially those in our own diocese of Derby, those beginning new chapters in their ministry. And in particular we think this week of Father Ed as he begins his ministry in Tile Hill in Coventry. sustain him by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who seek to serve others in public life. We pray for our Queen and for all who are in government. And we ask your blessing upon all who strive to bring peace to our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who have helped us to develop and grow 
and be the people we are. We pray for our homes and for those who have taught and nurtured us. Ask your blessing upon all schools and colleges and universities. May our homes reflect your grace and goodness, your love and hospitality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who feel frustrated through illness, poverty or oppression. May they know that God always has a calling for us. Whatever situation we find ourselves in. We pray for those who are ill or suffering or anxious at this time. Especially any who are known to us and on our hearts. And we lift them in a moment's quiet to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that you call us to life eternal and to the joy of your presence in your kingdom. We rejoice in the fellowship of your saints and pray for our loved ones departed. May we all enjoy serving you now and forever. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We offer ourselves afresh in the service of Christ as we say together, Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're going to sing the hymn, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear a battle if thou art by my side. No wonder from the Let me hear thee speaking in accents. 
accents clear and still above the storms of passion the murmurs of self-will oh speak to reassure me to hasten or control oh speak and make me Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.